Hey everybody, I hope that you all had a great week so far. Uh, good week here in Washington, uh, lots of work going on, uh, missing lots back home. Baby Major turned two months old this week, so you know, got to see some good pictures of him. We'll try to put up one of those photos for you all to see his progress. He's happy, he's healthy, um, he's uh, plenty vocal, making sure that we always know when, uh, when he is awake and uh, you know, what he wants out of us. So uh, in that, things are great in the Mast household right now. now as you may already know, on February 23rd, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, they began discharging water from Lake Okeechobee to our coast for the first time in calendar year 2019. Now these discharges, they began shortly after the, the Army Corps announced that they would be sending an average of 500 cubic feet per second, or CFS, to the St. Lucie Estuary, also increasing flows out to the west coast, out to the Caloosahatchee, for 21 consecutive days. Now, the 21 days was up this week. So I've been fighting with the Corps to get the Army Corps to stop these harmful discharges to our estuary. Any level of discharges, whether they're laden with algal blooms or not, are harmful to our estuary. We are a saltwater estuary. Lake Okeechobee is fresh water. We need zero fresh water off of Lake Okeechobee into our coastal saltwater estuary. It is all harmful. It all kills oyster beds. It all kills seagrass. It all allows for the bloom of, of algal blooms that are in fact freshwater algal blooms, not saltwater algal blooms. So we don't want any of that freshwater. First though, I do want to thank Colonel Kelly, Colonel Kelly of the, the Corps of Engineers, for his commitment to lowering Lake Okeechobee levels in advance of the wet season, in advance of the hurricane season when we traditionally get large volumes of rain that bring the lake up to very high levels that cause us to get those summertime massive discharges that are quite often laden with massive amounts of algal blooms. Last summer, many of you may remember, uh, NOAA said that Lake Okeechobee was about 90% covered in algal blooms, so we don't want those algal blooms discharged to us. That's even worse than just having freshwater discharges. So for the first time in a long time, the Army Corps, it's actually taking bold action to preemptively mitigate the need for those summertime discharges under Colonel Kelly's leadership. The Army Corps has made a conscious effort to send those volumes of water south. This is how it should be done, and I hope that this continues in the months to come. Now, I want to be very clear on this. I also believe that it's important that we not rest on any little or small victory before the real battles are won. These discharges to the St. Lucie threaten far more damage than they provide benefit, uh, and, and discharging toxic water to our coast, it can't continue because there, there literally, there is no benefit. We want zero discharges to our coast, any amount of discharge is a harmful amount of discharge to our close. Uh, you know, so so to you know to the core and their efforts to lower Lake uh, the levels of Lake Okeechobee moving in advance of the hurricane season. We appreciate it, but we also want that water to go south. Uh, we want that water to go places where it's wanted, places where it's needed. Uh, we don't want that water to go into a place where it's never needed, which is into into the St. Lucie. So that's what's going on there, plain and simple. Unfortunately, the Army Corps announced this week that they plan to continue these releases. That's a big mistake in my opinion. As I told the Corps, continuing these releases now could undo some of the ecological recovery that we've made since discharges stopped last summer. In fact, salinity levels in the South Fork are already plummeting thanks to this new round of fresh water discharges, and it's likely that continued discharges will further destroy oyster beds that have had the chance to recover slightly, seagrass that slightly has the chance to recover, threaten the estuary's ecological well-being. We cannot allow the destruction of our community. There's nothing that gives the state or the federal government, in my opinion, the right to go out there and destroy our community, and this is what we fight against. So for now, we need to keep fighting against these harmful releases. It's still great news that progress is being made to lower Lake O before the wet season, before hurricane season, but these discharges are hurting our environment, they're hurting our economy. Harmful discharges, those freshwater discharges, they are harmful no matter what. There is no level of freshwater discharge to our community that benefits. So these discharges to the St. Lucie are not the way to lower Lake O. We need that water to go south, we need it to go places that it's needed, we don't need to go into this, this Corps of Engineers built canal into our estuary. That, that is not the way God intended the system. Now, we must send that water south. Stop 
stop putting our coastal communities, our public health and human safety at risk. I will not stop fighting and I hope that you won't either. I think I know that you won't either. Now, on to a different topic that we touched on a little bit last week, but I wanted to say a little bit more because this is very important. Last week, the House of Representatives passed a bill. This was an entirely partisan bill. Uh, Democrats all on one side, Republicans all opposing this bill. It was a bill known as HR1, or what Speaker Pelosi was selling as to, to the American people for the, the, the For the People Act. The reality, though, is this bill would be more aptly named the For the Politicians Act, because it is designed to use your taxpayer dollars to enrich the, the professional political class in Washington, D.C. by funneling, again, your taxpayer dollars into their campaign accounts. Now, this is wrong and bad on so many different levels. It does this. This, this, this helps congressional campaigns by ensuring that taxpayers like you and I are forced to pay for campaign activities of candidates that we may not support. You know, maybe you don't support me, maybe you do support me, but that doesn't mean that you want your tax dollars going to fund a political campaign. What does that specifically look like? So, if a candidate for office receives a contribution, a political contribution for $200, the taxpayer would be forced against their will to multiply that six times so that the amount that, that was going into their political campaign, that money's used uh, you know, often for attack uh, ads, for political mailers, for buying uh, you know, ads on television, ads on the radio, ads that, that, that go in a number of different places. So, so uh, you know, if a person in, uh, you know, the, in the district of AOC or Nancy Pelosi or Ilhan Omar uh, you know, contributes $200 to their, to their campaign, you, taxpayers of the 18th Congressional District of Florida or anybody else that, that is viewing this, would be forced to contribute an additional $1,200 to that candidate whether or not you support them or not, or whether or not you want them to have you know, an, an ounce of taxpayer dollars, your taxpayer dollars would go to that instead of going to infrastructure projects, building roads, building bridges, you know, working on things like national defense, working on issues like education, working on so many other important things where, where your tax dollars should be spent. This is not a place where tax dollars should be spent. The, the goal of the federal government should be to take as little out of your paycheck as humanly possible to fund the federal government at, at the, the lowest possible level possible to make it work. This does not do that. This creates a windfall for partisan political campaign uh, at the expense of each and every one of you and, and me and my family as well. A 600% taxpayer match mean that 600% more, more TV ads, 600% more political mailers, 600% more profit for those who make their profit off of running campaigns. This is the opposite of service before self mentality and we do not need this out of elected officials. That's why I strongly oppose the bill. It still boggles my mind that this is something that congressional Democrats spent a substantial amount of time crafting and then pushing through the floor of the House of Representatives. It is absolutely beyond me. Now, elections, they are the cornerstone of our democracy and we need to continue to make sure that the voice of the people is always represented, that you get to go out there and know that your vote counts, that your vote is not being canceled out by somebody who's voting illegally. That is a, that is a cornerstone of what needs to go on in, in our electoral process. Now, throughout our nation's history, many men and women have fought and died for that right. I know many of them myself, and we must continue to defend it steadfastly forking out taxpayer dollars to make the rich richer, take away your freedom of speech when it comes to choosing who you want to support, not giving you that choice to go out there and make a campaign contribution or not, but taking your, your taxpayer money that, that is forced to come out of your check and sending it, into, sending it into campaigns, that is not defending our democracy. It is destroying it. And I, as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty heated about this issue. I think it's 
absolutely terrible. I, I think it's disgusting. I could use a lot of adjectives to describe it, but it is a, an issue that, that to me is just absolutely wrong. Now instead, we need to be focused on restoring power to the people. This always has to be the goal. Reducing government interference in people's lives, increasing transparency. In short, I believe we need to put people before politics. It's what I've been saying since the moment that I stepped into office that you gave me the opportunity to go out there and, and hold this seat for you. As I always tell people, this is not my seat. This is not my office. This is your Congressional District 18 seat. This is your office and you're kind enough to give me the opportunity to go out there and hold this seat for a time. And, and the way that I try to do that every single day is the way that I learned to do things in the military. You never ask your men to do something that you wouldn't do yourself, you hadn't already done yourself, that you wouldn't go out there and do immediately for yourself right now. That is the, the, the pinnacle trait, in my opinion, of good leadership. And, and that unfortunately is not something that we always see in Washington, but it is what I always work for. Now on that note, I hope that you all had a great, have a great week ahead. Uh, as always, it is an honor to serve you in Congress. It's an honor to represent you. I look forward to seeing you all around, uh, around town at Little League games, at the store, at wherever it is that we run into you at church. Um, in that, I hope that you all have a great week. Look forward to seeing you around.